Hello and welcome to another edition of the MTD CNC podcast. Uh, this one is being filmed at DMG Mori UK's headquarters uh, in the UK here in Coventry. Uh, the subject of this podcast is this fabulous machine behind us, which is the NMV 3000. Now we're going to be talking in detail about this machine and lots more. Um, if you are listening to this, of course, you can watch it too uh, by visiting our YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, the first three guests to this podcast. In fact, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves, but later on we'll also be joined um, by Charlie Lucas and also uh, Jay Highton. Um, so to start with, um, gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Perhaps you could introduce yourself. Um, we'll start with yourself, Steve. Yeah, welcome, Paul. Thank you for coming down to see us again and uh, giving the opportunity for our audience to, to look at this um, superb machine that we've got. Um, my name is Steve Fenn. I'm the managing director here, responsible for the sales and service of um, all of our products within the portfolio, which is very extensive, as, as you know, and hopefully some of our listeners know. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to a good discussion on this machine and the reasons why it can benefit UK manufacturing. There is so much to discuss. Honestly, you really need to listen to the to the whole of this podcast. Uh, in the preparation for it, there is so many topics that are really hot topics at the moment. Um, Kevin, introduce yourself. Good to see you. Hi, Paul. Yes, my name's Kevin Buck. I'm the uh, technical project specialist here at uh, DMG Mori UK. So my main remit really is working with uh, the key accounts of uh, the UK, of which we uh, have quite a number. Okay, good stuff. And then James. Uh, hey Paul, good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, introduce yourself for our yeah, audience. Hi, uh, I'm James Clist. I work with DMG Mori Finance here in the UK. I'm supporting UK customers purchasing DMG Mori machines. It really is as simple as that. It's an easy job for you, isn't it? It's, it's a doddle, yes. <laughs> okay, now coming up, we're going to be talking about the NF, NMV 3000 um, that's here in stock. Now, in fact, there's two of these machines. Um, so, of course, if you are interested in what we discussed today and you want to see it in action, you can come to DMG Morris uh, headquarters here in Coventry and then, of course, talk to them about... Um, potentially owning one of these. Uh, we'll be talking about lights out machining and automation. Um, importantly, the challenges and the considerations. Uh, we'll talk about cost and financing and um, how affordable are these machines and how DMG Mori can help you soften and de-risk purchases, which I know is a, a pretty hot topic for, for you guys and has been for uh, over recent years. Um, we'll also look at why this machine is so popular and some might say, and it was talked about in the preparation, that this is one of DMG Mori's best kept secrets. So we'll, we'll explore that too. Um, we'll look in depth at the, the technology on the machine with Kevin, who I know is um, really looking forward to getting, to his, getting his teeth stuck into that. Um, but most of all, this podcast is aimed at really highlighting how the technologies like this can solve manufacturing problems. And I think that's a big thing for me. It's great talking about the kit, guys. It's great talking about you know, what products you have in the range, but it's really about finding out what problems manufacturers have, or maybe they don't even know they've got that this type of kit could uh, solve. And if all of that's of interest to you, like I said, you can, um, of course, come here to DMG Mori in Coventry to see this machine in action. So um, before we really get going and get into the nitty gritty, I thought it would be good maybe for the three of you just to give us a, a, a sentence on on what you would like to say about the NMV 3000 and why? what's the biggest message you'd like to get across in this podcast before we really get going? And if we could maybe start with you, Steve. Yeah, I think that, that UK manufacturing um, faces some real challenges today, um, as the rest of the world do. And the rest of the world are working hard to overcome those challenges. So it is kind of my responsibility to make sure I support our customers and our prospects in the right way and, and give them the equipment that's going to make them, you know, very efficient from a worldwide point of view. And I think the, the thing that comes out the most with the NMV is the complexity of the machine. It's, um, it's a very, um, very well-built machine, which Kevin will go into the details of. But it also gives huge flexibility to the customer. It gives you that flexibility to manufacture in an unattended um, approach. And 
you know, people should be using that lights out situation today. Well, I'm going to come back to you on that in a minute because right. I know it's a really big, big topic for you yeah. and for the company in general. Um, Kevin, the sentence that you would like or, or a sentence that you'd like to say that would really cover off and perhaps you're in, it's the perfect time now for you to just describe what the NMV is and what you would like to talk about in this podcast. Yeah, I think what I'd like to uh, highlight the differences of the NMV from a lot of other machines that there are available around the world and some of the technologies that the NMV brings to uh, the end user. Um, and probably one of the, the biggest points it brings is it's a very extremely rigid machine in its construction. It's a bridge type machine tool. So it's not a C-shape form. I think you probably know the differences between the C-shapes. So a bridge is particularly strong. Um, all of the axes on this machine are at the top of the machine. So you've got X, Y, Z at the top and then you've got your B and your C axis in the table. So the axes at the top of the machine are also DCG driven. Um, we'll go into the aspects of that later, I hope. The spindle is held within that bridge system on an octagonal ramp, which is particularly rigid, and hopefully we'll touch on that a little bit later. And also the pallet, if you do take the pallet version machine, there's a table version as well, but this is the pallet machine and the pallet's connection to the machine tool is particularly rigid. Many of these aspects of the machine pool really add up to a, uh, a rigid, highly performing, reliable machine tool that delivers just really tool life I haven't seen on many machines. You, you took all my points off my cards, would you believe, but it, what a fantastic description. I mean, and to add to that, for those that, that aren't watching and are listening, this is a five axis machine with a 34 pallet station on it, um, of which of those things we'll go into a bit more detail. James, from your perspective, it's always interesting to have you on um, our conversations, our videos and our podcast, because your angle is very much affordability, isn't it? It's about the companies being able to, 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 to value their return on investment and how they can actually initially get this machine on, on the deck. So what's the kind of message you'll be looking to get across? I think, Paul, the point here is that any company that invests in a machine tool, they do so to make money. So there's absolutely no point in selling a machine tool which is not suitable for the company, which is what DMG Mori will not do. I gave some thought before our podcast today and looked at some of the customers that we've financed these machines for. And it's a real broad spectrum, but the one thing that, that is apparent, the, the machines have gone in, they've run, with automation, lights out, and they made money for the customer. That's that's the that's my goal. And I think if we can if we can throw out this podcast, get people to think, actually, do you know what this this is within my reach, and it's something that I should be looking at. That will be deemed a well, success. Uh, indeed, because a lot of those customers, you would maybe look at the the headline price of this machine, and they would initially balk and say, no, that's not right for us. But when the technical and the commercial are presented side by side, it's become a no brainer. Okay, and that's going to be coming up later in this podcast. Keep your powder dry on that one, James, because right. I know we've got some facts and figures that we'll be able to demonstrate. Um, Steve, we were talking earlier, one of the points that you made uh, about the machine, which I found really interesting, was um, you were talking about, and this is very broad, and this is why I like being able to, to do podcasts like this, because we, we don't have to rush through it. We can, we can perfectly describe um, and talk about the reasons why and where this machine fits. And, and you talked about UK manufacturing in general and the fact that this is a, a machine that is ideally suited to demanding, really demanding work. Why is that important and why did you mention that? Well, I think demanding work is something that the UK do. I mean, we've got some, some fabulous SMEs, some fabulous OEM, um, OEMs that do some very complex um, low volume, high variety type applications of, of work. You know, gone are the days when we're going to do cheap, you know, castings and bash them out with a few holes in. Um, that is a very difficult um, commercial aspect to keep going in a company because, you know, if you don't utilize your spare time and machines like this will give you that, um, then you're going to be eaten up by the low cost economy. It's as simple as that. And the UK is not a low-cost economy. 
unfortunately. And, and do you see that, James, as well? I mean, is that something that you go in to companies and, 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 and see when they're looking to buy these machines? It's because the quality of the work that they're doing is for industries that they really, really need something that's going to stand out and, and make them better than their competition, potentially. And, and, and I think we need to appreciate that certainly two companies, three companies that spring to mind are making critical aerospace components and, and there is no margin for error. And also because of the, the sheer cost of the material, which again, we know at the moment costs are rising, a very, very accurate machine tool, a very reliable machine tool, which Kevin will, will lead on to, reduces the amount of scrap of material. That's important at the moment. Okay, Kevin, let's, let's, let's do some of this then. Let's okay. talk about this machine in detail. You've alluded to, to yourself and, and, and lots will know there's, there's lots of pallet machines in the marketplace. There's lots of five-axis technology. Um, when you're in a meeting and you're in a, in a sales call or you're looking at a project, what's your angles? What are you looking to extract from the customer um, so that you can solve and you think this mach machine may solve better than potentially others? Okay, well, we normally just trying to absorb what range of parts they're looking to produce and try and look at an angle that will deliver the cost effective solution for them. Um, and this machine particularly lends itself to uh, high surface finish parts, um, high definition contoured parts, difficult materials are an ideal area that this machine needs to operate in. And if you want to make good money in the difficult materials, then the NMV for me particularly lends itself to that because of the features within the machine. You know, the uh, box construction, the twin ball screw for the DCG drive system, the octagonal ram, the pallet system, it's, it's just one of the most rigid machine tools you could apply to the component. And then you, you get accurate parts, you get parts right first time, and you get the surface finish and you get the tolerances. Um, tell me about this octag octagonal ram that you talk about. Um, you've also got ceramic pads, internal coolant, uh, internal cooling, twin ball screws, all of these things. What, do, what are they and what do they give someone that purchases this machine? What's their, com what's their comfort from knowing this? Okay, then most machine tools in the market and some of the, the machine tools that we offer uh, the, the spindle in the machine is held on roller guides, um, which, which are okay to a certain uh, respect. But if you want the ultimate in solidity and rigidity, then you look for solid guideways. And the way that uh, Mori have designed this machine is particularly clever. We call it the octagonal rum. So therefore you've got uh, four surfaces uh, you can look at in the ram of the machine and the ram is supported 360 degrees around so the, the, the ram is, uh, is supported then by the ceramic pads the ram is uh, precision scraped so you've got a field, or a field of oil there between the ceramic pads and the, and the ram so it's just held in the highest rigidity but it does more than that really because it's an octagonal ram, so you've got 360 degrees of contact all the way around, you get thermal aspects on any machine. You know, the spindle's getting warm as it's working hard, and you will work it hard on this machine. Um, as that happens, things start to expand. But if, you're, if you have guideways that are contacting the ram in 360 degrees positions, then the spindle center line pull will not move. As the machine breathes through its temperature, as its temperature rises, it just expands in both the forward and reverse direction and the left and the right direction. So the beauty is the spindle is going to stay where you think it should be, where the measuring system knows it to be, throughout the working period of the machine. Yeah, and, and, and these are some of the points that we, we, will, we will come on to, probably talk into more detail about the fact that these solve some of the challenges that automation brings. And on that point, I wanted to, to maybe talk to you all, um, and firstly you, Steve, about automation in general here in, in this country, because this is what we're looking at here. We've got 34 pallets on this machine, and we're looking at lights out running. Um, and we are still uh, a market that isn't as good as, uh, you know, a lot of our overseas um, partners or non-partners, however you want to term them. Um, but we are getting better. But how important is it now for people to start going, okay, 
I know I can use this machine as a five axis on its own, but I don't really need the pallet system. Why do they? What, what is automation going to give them? There's a lot of benefits to the, to the pallet system. The first thing is, you know, lots of customers have repeat jobs coming up every week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. You can just leave it in their set. You can leave the tools in their set. You pull one in, the machine is, as Kevin's described, thermally very accurate, very stable. You pull a, a job in on a Monday, you do a one-off, you invoice it, you get your money in. Yeah, this is what guys are really interested in. This is what a machine tool is bought for. It's actually bought for invoicing. Not, not because people like the colour of it or love the colour of my eyes. It's there to actually do a job for the, for the company. And from that point of view, it allows them then to pick the job up again two weeks later, three weeks later, and do another one. So it doesn't mean that this has to be high volume. This, can, this is very, very adaptable to high variety. And... You know, we touched on it earlier, power is a cost. You know, energy is a huge worldwide issue. And we all know that energy or power is cheaper at night. So why not run the machine at night? You know, where the machine's very, very capable with sister tooling, it doesn't have to be set up to be running high volume. It can be doing, you know, five or six different jobs all the way through its process. And, you know, at the end of the day, we don't need a man or a woman person to stand there and watch this machine perform we can leave it running on its own it is capable of running on its own and we've got many many applications in the uk where it is so how many have you turned how, how many have gone do you know what that's not and this would be a good question for james as well shortly but how many have gone ah, this it's, it's it's not for me you know it's I, I don't need that level of automation i've only got two offs three offs you know, um, it's going to be difficult to set. It's going to be difficult to operate. What problems is it, headaches is it going to give me? You know, how many of those have you had that have ended up walking out with something similar to this? Well, if you go back to the very part of that question, yes, we've had a lot of people that walked in and went, that's not for me. That's not for us. And that's fine. And we're not going to push it down somebody's neck. But we've also had people walk in and went, Really? It can do this and it can do that and it can solve my problem here and solve that problem and they've bought and those people that have bought have generally gone on to buy a second or a third or even a fourth machine so there are the people that have got vision that understand really where their business has got to be um, we can commercially help the customer move along those lines which James to go through so th there is a very very good argument to go down this route it's not going to be for everybody. But the ones that do go through it, I know are earning good money. Well, let, let's, let's, I'll ask you this, this, Kevin. I think we'll come on to the finance bit shortly, James, because it's really important. Um, but Kevin, who are those people, Steve mentions that it's not for everyone. We'll talk about who it is for, but who do you think it isn't for? Well, if, if you're a company that's producing work that's fairly open tolerance work, that's fairly what we would call simplistic work you don't really buy an NMV for that but that's fine because as a DMG Mori company we're the products we would move you towards so the beauty is with dealing with DMG Mori really as a company is that we can pick the right machine tool for the application pool we, we're not worried about losing a sale because we can follow the customer's needs to wherever he needs to be even from an entry level machine I know we're not here to, to discuss the M1 type of machine today but if that's the right application for them, that's what we would advise them to do. Okay, so it's fairly it's a fairly limited audience that it's not for then. It's a bigger audience that it could be for. Let me let me um, suggest here, because I go into a lot of machine shops and, and we do at MTD CNC where they've got lots and lots of spindles, taking up lots and lots of for, floor space. They're making lots and lots of different components out of lots of different materials. But generally they are tight tolerance because most most parts in industry are so it would be suitable for companies like that then wouldn't it it could reduce you see, yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, let me just tell you one other thing scenario they're making lots of or they're not making lots of money they're not they're taking job from one machine to another to another to another they've got excessive tool life they've got geometric tolerance problems you know so the machine is suitable for for more more than not if you like. So you're 100% right. Um, 
why shouldn't they? And I think it comes down to the foresight of those owners. That, that, that some people walk in here. Um, we've had one guy over in Northern Ireland was very sceptical, done things very traditionally on horizontal and mill turn type applications, has now invested in one of these. He said, I just need to get the second one in. It, it, is, the, it is the machine in the shop that is eating all my work, making all my money. You know, so it takes away a lot of headaches, a lot of problems that we all know about, that all these guys know about. And sometimes it's it's yeah. very difficult to change the mindset. You know, and as Kevin says, sometimes we then have to say, okay, well, this you prefer this, this and this, but automation is key. There, there are other reasons you would take an NMV as well, Paul. Some people want a, an easier time in their workshop. You know, they... They want to be able to take a job to a machine and know that there's not a lot of deflection on that machine, know that, you know, if they measure a tool, when they go to touch that tool on the, uh, the workpiece, it's going to cut that actual size because, you know, lesser machines will not cut in the same position in which you measure. But I find this interesting because where you're talking there is from a machinist perspective, um, he's, he's got a part he needs to deliver to tolerance and he might have problems. Commercially, James, does the owner of the company take things like that into consideration or do they, do they look at that as a shop floor problem and think, well, this is just going to cost me a lot of money, um, hundreds of thousands of pounds, which most machine tools of this sophistication and technology are. You know, it's, 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 too, it's too much for me. I can do that job somewhere else when clearly probably not as well. But is he thinking in the same way? And if he, if he isn't or if he is, how do you demonstrate how good this could be for him commercially? I think two things. You spoke earlier about manufacturers and helping manufacturers. Uh, MTD have done that. And I think it's important that DMG Mori do that as well. You know, if all that a, a salesman does is drop a quotation on a customer's desk then there'll be a high price point and the customer quite rightly would question why should he spend that money? It's very much my role to help the customer understand. Steve used the word vision. Um, we have one customer that, that invested in one of these machines. He ran that machine. When they closed on a Friday lunchtime, he pressed the start button. When he came in Monday morning, he'd earned enough money over the weekend, lights out, because of the number of tools in the carousel, because of the, 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 the anti-vibration measures that DMG Mori have taken, that he produced a week's worth of production, which covered the machine's weekly cost over a weekend. That then gave him capacity to sell on more complex five-axis work Monday through, Monday through Thursday. And is this hard for you to when you go and speak to customers? Do, do they sometimes need to experience this themselves to go, do you know what? Now I need number two and now I need number three. And it's, that, it's got to be that first one, isn't it? It's got to be those... The first one generally takes some time. But I pride myself on, on what we've been able to achieve here in the UK and with my colleagues across Europe and in America, whereby we've actually helped an education process. We've helped the customer understand that it's not just the headline price. It's sitting down. It's understanding roughly what the machine's going to generate, how much money that can make the company, take away the monthly payments, which on this machine wouldn't need to start until six months after the machine were installed, and actually give them a very basic cash flow, not a complicated return on investment, but simple housekeeping. On this job, if you make this, after you've paid for the machine, you will clear this much a month. And that, that's a positive message not a headache. Mm. Um, there's kind of numbers you could probably assign to that as well, isn't there? You could probably say, well, you know, if you ran it for this many hours and charged this much per hour, your income could be X before you've even potentially had to lay out any, any money. And the experience you've gained in that period and the opportunity to win new business, win-win. Yeah, I mean, on this machine... If you only ran it at maybe 60% of its potential, and depending on charge out rates, you could make easily anywhere between 200 and 300,000 pounds in the first six months after the machine's installed before you make your first repayment on the machine. And the other beauty is really when you sell an NMV, and we've sold quite a few NMVs, is that, yes, Paul, you're quite right, the first machine 
you know, it takes a little bit of time for us to convince the customer. But after, if he does decide to go for the machine, he receives the machine on his shop floor. Steve will bear me out on this, and I know James will so very quickly when you have an NMV, you suddenly realise in the first few months, Steve, don't you, what sort of a machine you have. I think you're right, Paul, you know, particularly the entrepreneurial, um, you know, subcontractor, you know, the, the SMEs, they are acutely aware, you know, the bosses are acutely aware of what the issues are on the shop. Um, and they transfer that into a financial calculation. Um, and this is where James comes in because he's able to reverse that back for them and, and look at it a different way with the support of Kevin giving, you know, the technical element or anybody else in the team, in fact, here, yeah, giving the technical element. So, yes, people are aware of it, certainly. But what would be, what would be, the, what would be the risk to someone? And I know it might be quite obvious, OK, the risk is that they've got a machine and they've got no work for it, and where do they go next? And that might be seen as a big risk, and it is the only risk, really, that stops people doing it, isn't it? Yes. Um, what, how do you mitigate that risk? Well, very, very few people would buy a machine today on a, on a speculative situation. So I'm going to buy that machine because I know that out in the marketplace the work is there, and it is there. There is lots of work there. Is it the right work for them? Is it the right price for them? So I don't think many people would do that. But what they do do is they've got ongoing contracts. More and more people are going into LTAs, long-term agreements with companies. Um, and we've, we have got to be in a position to support them. So two in stock, two more coming behind, two more coming behind. So we've got a flow of NMVs coming through to make sure that we're available on a relatively short delivery should those people make those decisions. Okay, I'm just going to reiterate, we're talking about a five-axis machine incentive here with a 34 pallet station, all manner of options, um, high-speed spindle, uh, um, very, very high, high levels of technology, which, which Kevin will continue to touch on throughout this. One of the things I was going to suggest is, is there a way, I'm always trying to think, look at things pragmatically, could you have three or four five-axis machines? Have you, done an, have you done the number on this, whether it's you, James, Kevin, or, or Steve, where you go, okay, well, if you, if, you, if you took out three of those verticals and, you, and, and you're doing that work on that one and you're doing that work on that one and that on that, two five-axis, take them all out, we'll part exchange and we'll give you a number for that. You put this one in, this will do the same amount of work than those will. It, 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 because to me, that's just, if I was running a machine shop, I would need someone to come in and go, do you know yeah. what, we'll, we'll move those three verticals, we'll, we'll, we'll take that five axis out, we'll pull that horizontal out, that job can be done in six minutes on here, that one in seven, these are the things we need on the machine, and there you go. Well, yeah. if you ever get fed up doing what you're doing, come and work with me, because you've just done a financial justification, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's what we do, we build the case. Yeah, absolutely yeah. spot on. And our business managers will happily sit with any customer and go through that process. Like everything, you've got to have a two-way situation. We can't go in and say, look at this, what we've got. It's the best thing since sliced bread. It's maybe not. It may be that there's something else that the customer needs or requires or desires. And, um, but our business managers will be able to go through that. And we've done that many times on many different products across the range. Um, to look at the justification of going the numbers with James. Because I just think that that is the biggest challenge. People can see and they can look at the machine, and I want to talk to you about Japan in a minute, but they can see where it's built, they can see the heritage behind the company. They know that, they're, that, 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 that replacing older machinery with new machinery means you've got warranties, you've got you know, less chance of mechanical failure, you, you're developing your... Um, you're, you know, you've got new control systems which are going to be more reliable and faster. So you've got all of these things and they're easy to just say, it's got this, it's got that, it's got that. But it's trying to get them to go, okay, and if, 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 if we maybe change the way you do it, this could be perfect in a much smaller footprint as well. That's the... It, you know. it is. And picking up on a point you made earlier about mitigating risk, Steve rightly said, companies generally don't buy machines if they haven't got work to go on it that would be commercial suicide. There may be an educated guess that, you know, what if we get this machine and we have this capacity, we're pretty sure we can fill it or we can put something on it. What does happen is customers work changes. Now, speaking to Jay this morning, we have a customer with an NMV running some fairly simple parts. Um, the worker changed from which they, they bought the machine for initially. 
uh, Jay's taken 30% out of the cycle time just by going in. So it's not just the machine purchase today. It's not just the financing today and not paying for six months. It's the support that DMG Mori gives through the total life of the machine. And we're going to have Jay uh, on shortly where we're going to look at, we're going to get his opinion from an applications engineer about how he feels about this machine. It's going into the field, what customers say about it and what they, what they like about it. Um, Steve, you were in Japan recently. Uh, good fun, good trip, something Fantastic. you do, do, do regularly. Well, we haven't been able to do, we, the, the trip was actually planned pre-COVID and we were supposed to go in uh, March of 2020 when COVID hit big time and the whole world was closed down. So we cancelled that trip and we re-established it um, a few weeks ago. We took um, a group of 20 people, customers, um, even customers that have been with us a long time didn't realise the extent of some of our manufacturing facilities, how we were very much vertically integrated to control the price, the, the deliveries. Um, you know, and there is a big thing about deliveries at the moment. And one of the issues that, that we have is that um, not necessarily the, spare, the parts to get hold of to build the machine and the controls, which there are shortages of, but the size of our older book is just growing beyond all means. And the company's been investing for many years to, to manage that growing order book. But I think that we've been kind of a victim of our own success. In the UK, we've been, we've been very successful throughout COVID. Um, we went into COVID with a big order book. Um, that kept us going, obviously, financially and from an engineering point of view. And as we've come out of COVID, the investment has been, has been you know, it's been frantic to be honest with you and um, sometimes we can't get the deliveries that we want but DMG Murray has had great success throughout the whole world and that tells you something about the product tells you where the product fits particularly in automation so when we was in Japan one of the factories which is Nara which was the original factory for the Mori Seiki product um, which was actually converted to manufacture our small lightweight turning machines and machining centres um, as they've all been transferred across to Eager Plant now, which is now the largest machine tool building in Japan and probably in the world, I suspect. And that plant at Nara has been handed over to what's called a solution centre, and it deals with automation. So when we went round there, there were seven or eight lathes linked with a gantry loader, there were a number of turning turn mill centres linked with gantry loaders, there were robotics. There was a, a handling of a, a long shaft project. Um, some really nice stuff. Some of the stuff was confidential, we couldn't see. But you can imagine the size of that factory as was, that we're building, you know, five, 600 machines a month, has now been turned over to this solution centre, which deals with the automation. That's a huge commitment. From and is that Murray. the type of volume that they are, that they are building? They're, and more? They're, more, yeah. The volume is, is very high. The level of sophistication is higher. It's, it, the automation is getting higher and higher it, in all sorts of countries. Even countries that are, have got low labour costs are investing heavily in automation mm. because there is nothing that beats zero labour cost. And it, yeah, I to totally agree, and I'm, I'm sure it's a fascinating week for your customers. In a, in a, a short, truncate, truncated amount of time, if you can, just tell people that have never experienced one of these kind of factory tours what, what the agenda's like. Because I'm always it's, fascinated, but they're, they're, not, they're, they're pretty hard work, aren't it they? It is hard work. We, we fly out on a Saturday, you arrive Sunday morning, we do a little bit of time adjusting with a little bit of sightseeing, um, there's a bit of dinner on a Sunday night, and then we start. On Monday, we go into the technical centre in Tokyo, we then move on to the Nara campus, we move on to the Eager campus, and we're getting tours of the factories, and the factories, particularly the Eager one, we've got, as we talk about the vertical integration, we've got our own machining facilities, our own heat treatment, our own foundries, you know, our grinding, our ball screw uh, grinding and assembly areas, machine assembly areas. You know, you're taken around on a mini bus to, to, to section to section, so it's a big area. And it's really full on. And what's also important for me, actually, is for people to immerse themselves in the culture of Japan. And I've been there many, many times, and I'm still struggling with it. 
you know, to be honest, it's a very, very different way of life to what we have in the Western world. And it's very interesting for our customers to understand. I didn't know you did that. I didn't know you built it this way. That's interesting. Could I implement that here? So there's a, there's a lot of thought that goes into what they do. And the group this time, the, I've never seen a group gel so well. And we had a mixture of OEMs and, and um, subcontractors. And they were cross-fertilizing ideas. They're now actually two or three of them doing work amongst each other. And, and it's, it's fabulous to see that in, in our sort of effort that we made for them. But yeah, I think a three or four day recovery plan was... I was going to say, it sounds like this is good. You slept well, I assume. Uh, the following week, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not during the week. <laughs> um, Kevin, with, with, with the J Japanese factor on these machines, you've, you've mentioned some of the elements that are, that are built into these that give you that kind of real, real precision, don't they? Precision on day one is one thing, but it but it needs to last. And yes. I think the challenges, this was where I'll probably come on to one of our, our final points here, is, is about the challenges that people face with the unmanned running and how these machines solve that. Uh, the enemy is always vibration. We mentioned that before. It comes up a lot. Just tell us some of those challenges that people may be worried about or may face that you go, actually, you know, they're quite easy to overcome because we do it this way and we do it that way. It's the things you could maybe pick out for us. Okay, there's a few. Um, this particular machine is uh, what we call a DCG machine. So the, uh, the table or the, the bridge of the machine is driven by a ball screw on both sides. Uh, ball screws are directly driven by the motors and the ball screws themselves are actually core cooled. So what's that mean for a customer? Well, it basically means that as the machine's working in sort of in a factory probably over a weekend they might not have the heating on so um, the whole machine is, is keeping the same temperature and it's not expanding or contracting too much so that all adds to well you the, the point you make about the twin ball screws yes you wouldn't have a car driven by the two left wheels would you I suppose it's a no. little bit similar you'd have it all the, the thing we like to do but you could do it more if you're uh, you've got a table in for it is just take a cardboard box place it on the table and then um, push it from the right hand end or the left hand end or the centre and it's, it's difficult to steer the box and keep it straight isn't it yeah but if you put your two fingers on the outer corners and then push you get beautiful motion straight motion and that's exactly what you get on the surface of the part yeah. okay so with things like the twin ball screw the octagonal ram um, this this bridge style construction that you have yeah. mean that the environment that you have for holding and machining the part is as as true and as as, as geometrically best and as solid and as precise as you as, yeah. as you believe you can get with Plus a five axis machine you're not getting uh, vibration from any drivetrain as well and i'm more, more the point i'm bringing to here is the c axis which is the, the rotary table, as you're probably aware, and the B-axis, which is the tilting. Now, both of those on a lot of machines, depending on how much money you're spending on a machine, might be worm wheel drive or some mechanical drive. Well, you know, you get vibrations coming through. From, the NMV is direct drive. There's no gears on any of the drive systems of that. The C-axis is temperature controlled. The B-axis is temperature controlled. The spindle is temperature controlled. The ball screw is temperature controlled. And if you get control of your temperature, your expansion and contraction is under control again, less wear. So you're investing... Maintenance, long-term, longevity. All of that. Yeah. And all this rigidity, Kevin, is adding up to a reduction of costing on tooling, isn't it? Because your tool life Absolutely, will, will definitely be better. We've seen... That's proven. We've proven that. We have, yeah. yeah. And, and, and in a few seconds, Jay's going to be coming up and he this is his favourite DMG Mori machine and I'm sure he's he going to the reasons behind that. It's um, my favourite as well. It's your favourite. It's my favourite. <laughs> it, you know, we talk about this, Paul, just briefly. DMG Mori are five axis champions. There's no doubt about that at all. And, and we can challenge anybody because if you look at the width of our uh, product range within the five axis, whether it be on mill turn or turn mill, it's phenomenal. The experience we have with five axis is phenomenal and from different parts of the world as well to all integrate that intellectual property into the development of machine tools. This one, the NMV 3000, and we of course do a 5000 and an 8000, surpasses all our five axes. It is the best machine in our portfolio. 
that's uh, that's a very very good good statement there. Steve. I hope Dr. Murray listens to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, just before we 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 coming up, and Jay's going to give us a quick overview of hands on on the machine. The pallet system. We haven't gone into great detail about. Um, We've, yes. we've said it's got 34 pallets, but we haven't spoken about, you know, the work holding, the ease of use and the getting into We'll touch on that with, with Jay. James, um, before you depart us, because I know your, your, your phone's been ringing and there's probably deals to do, you mentioned to me earlier about when you do go and see customers that have purchased these machines and you hear about other deals that have been done for, for maybe competitors' machines, the fact that this is one solution, everything's integrated, there's no arguments, there's no hassle, you, you kind of find there's no one chasing someone for this. It was a big part for you earlier, you mentioned. Yeah, today. hugely. Um, you know, automation is a step forward that everybody needs to embrace. Um, company with vision have done so. We have our own automation, which can bolt alongside. Sometimes customers decide to, buy, to purchase from a third party supplier, which is fine, until there's a problem. And then what generally happens is someone looks right, the other person looks left and says, it's your problem. And the customer's left not getting the production that he needs, and the machine sat there whilst these issues are sorted. I'm a firm believer that with integrated automation, direct from the manufacturer, you really do have a one-stop solution. Brilliant. And um, James, for people that want to contact you, quite easy to get hold of if they're interested in talking yeah, about how they can be flexible. absolutely. No problem at all. Uh, get me through, through here. Yeah, cool. We'll put your details okay. um, on the uh, channels that we're watching this. Um, when we come back, I'm going to speak to uh, I'm going to speak to Jay now, and we're going to get a real hands-on overview of the NMV 3000 and the pallet system. When we come back, um, Charlie Lucas is also going to join us from DMG Mori. But as for now, um, I'm going to go and speak to Jay. Thank you, James. So I'm now with Jay Highton, who's an applications engineer here at DMG Mori. Um, Jay, what I want to try and get out of this is just to um, find out what you think about this machine yourself. And then also, because you're traveling up and down the country, seeing and working on installations of the NMV machine, what you're hearing from customers and what you think their perception is. Because um, you're boots on ground, really, aren't you? So what, what would you firstly say about this particular model? What do you like about it? Best kept secret. The best machine, personally, I think, DMG Murray make. And what would be the reasons for that, though? Is it... Ease of use, accessibility, uh, accuracy. And that, that, that um, access and ease of use is an important one and probably something we wouldn't have touched on on the sofas uh, throughout this podcast because it's, it's, it's hard to see, isn't it? But now I'm standing by the machine. You can see that I suppose you can walk straight up to the part, setting components, measuring components if you needed to. It, that's Yeah, you're also two steps left and two steps right from tool changer to AWC. So everything is within a couple of steps around you. You can get inside the machine. You can see with the, the ceiling back where you can, you can get absolutely access to every part. Okay. When you um, talk about accuracy, you, I mean, as your role, what do you do? Do customers give you an application and you have to go away and, 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 and design it, create it, machine it, deliver it? G well, g generally, um, if, a if it's a, a machine sale, machine will be installed. We can either provide just training on the machine um, or we can go into a full project where we can program, uh, we can set, we can operate and we can obviously automate for the system. So for lights out machining, uh, building into sister tooling. And you would do that yourself? Is that your expertise? So you can look at a part and you can go... That's perfect for the NMV. And you can use some of the things that you know about this machine to push it to its extremes to make that part quicker. Definitely, yeah. Um, so it, obviously everything depends on the application. Um, but generally it's always around the customer's part, but we can just assist and help. It's always nice to work with the customer rather than just doing it out and out ourselves. Um, it gives them a hands-on effect and it gives them an understanding of what the machine's like as well. And by you saying you believe for you this is the best machine in the DMG Mori portfolio on a, on a five axis, why do you think that is, and you mention accessibility and you mention um, performance and precision, but do you feel comfortable, re you know, is it about a comfort factor of pushing this thing to its limits? It really is a, you know, a real metal removal machine. Yeah, ease of use in it just doesn't stop. When, once it's set up, it just goes and goes and goes. It is just a solid, solid machine. Everything is compact, it's rigid, and that just proves in the accuracy of the parts that people are producing as well. What about the pallet system itself? 
Um, 34 pallets, but easy to load, easy to set, easy to bring them up. What about if there's an issue on one part and you need to go to another part? How does that all work? It's, it, it sounds silly. It's, it's as easy as an Excel spreadsheet. It, it's just a click of a button. You call, you load, you press ready. The machine does everything else for you. It is that easy to use. And what if I had, I was running unmanned and there was an issue on pallet six and I was running on pallet six and, you know, would it, would it automatically take that pallet out, put another one in? What's, how does the ongoing programming work? It, de it depends how far and how deep you want to go into it. You can have a pallet eject on an error and then you can call in a secondary job or you can call if it's the same job on the same pallet. You can, there's a lot of things you can do. You can interrogate tool life. If tool life's expired, you can call up a sister tool or if the, the machine also can calculate whether there's enough life in that specific tool to do that pallet. If not, it can select another tool. We, I've even actually set up a, a system for a customer where the, the, the system will work as much as it can producing the, the components on the pallet. So even if the last tool was to break on one pallet, the next pallet would come in and it would run up to that tool until it, everything had exhausted. So they would only then have to come in and, and work on the pallets that needed the additional tools on. Okay, interesting. Um, things that people face as potential issues with our man running, what about Swarf? on this machine? Do you, is, there, is there a way and do you add things into programs to make sure you... You, you can, obviously, the easiest, the easiest way is the, all the chip flushing that comes as, with, the, with the machine. Um, you can rotate the B axis, you can spin around the C axis. You can, there's lots of different ways to eject Swarf. Is it air blasts? Can you blast using the coolant? Yeah. And these things you can pre-program in, so you can say, when we get to point X in the program. Let's stop. Let's blast. And yeah, you... absolutely. Yeah, the, a really common one is obviously wash down at the end, uh, spin the B axis, tilt that, and uh, and and get rid of the, all of the uh, swarf residing on the pallets. Um, loading in through the top. You mentioned accessibility. Do, do people make? And I know you'd use this mainly as a pallet system, but it does allow you to be able to use this as a part to just do one part. Yeah, it? absolutely. So obviously, maximum diameter three hundred and fifty mil maximum height 300, 100 kilo payload, you can uh, retract, retract the ceiling and you can get directly a crane over the top of the center line of the pallet for uh, ease of loading. And you wouldn't have any concern having such a weight on such a small diameter table? No, not at all. And is that because of the way it's secured to this uh, frame? Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. Just the, the fact that it's just so rigid. Um, control systems. This, we've now got the new Celos control on here. Do, do, and it's, it's, it's a lot of app bases on here to help it make you easy to program. But there'd be an argument to suggest if this thing's just running un, unmanned, okay, it's good to have a new software, but, but a lot of it is the only thing you should be doing is loading and, and taking your part, putting your parts in and taking your parts out. Well, that's my opinion of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone will say the, the apps, uh, you know, you can do this or you can do that. But in my opinion, you don't stand at the control on this machine. You stand at the work set station and you just feed it material and it'll eat it. Um, what are your customers saying to you? You've been on many sites where these have gone in. What's their sort of, when you go in on day two and day three of the machine running, you, you just know you're going to walk into a happy, a happy environment? Well, the one that I've always noticed with NMV customers is there's not many that only have one. There's, they normally tend to have three or five. What do you think their, their most favorite thing is about the machine? If you had to say, the thing you hear more commonly from customers about the NMV range is? Productivity. Bar none, that it doesn't stop. So as I've said throughout this podcast, if you want to see this machine in action um, and look at some of the things that I've just spoken about with uh, Jay as well, you can come here to um, DMG Mori in Coventry, their headquarters, and see this machine in action. But you'll probably need to be quick. This machine behind us is in stock, but I know there's a lot of interest for it at the moment. There is also a second machine available from stock. And of course, um, everybody here at DMG Mori will be more than happy to talk to you about how, um, how they can uh, show you and demonstrate that uh, this could be the machine for you. So for now, we're joined by Charlie, who's uh, replaced James. Charlie, how are you doing? Hi there, good thanks, how are you? Very good, thank you. Perhaps you could just um, introduce yourself and what you do at DMG Mori to our listeners and those that are viewing on the uh, Yeah, YouTube sure. The um, so my role is marketing assistant. I look after all the social media channels and um, the events that we do. 
So we plan those any overseas events in house, um, any of the supply events that we hold, I plan those and run those. And then I also try and look after the sales guys a little bit. <laughs> is that is that easy? Is um, what, is that the hardest bit of the job? Or the easiest yeah, bit? Yeah, over the past five years, it's got a lot easier, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Steve, is that easy for you or harder? No, that makes life a lot easier for me, actually. <laughs> there's, there's a buffer now. But um, <laughs> I think what I'd also like to add to, to what Charlie does, social media, which is, is, a, is a huge thing these days. And for old fogies like me, it's, it's sometimes difficult to grab hold of. But Charlie's generation, it's quite easy. And of course, people do watch this kind of activity. They, they, they on the phone, as at a bus stop or at the traffic lights when they shouldn't be and so on and so forth. But what Charlie's also done is work with quite a number of our customers to give them exposure within the social media um, spectrum that we have, which is quite large as well. So it's not just about, you know, Charlie looking after the interests of DMG Morris. She's also been really good. And you visited a number of customers recently where you've gone in, listened to what their problems were, and then made some suggestions about how they could move forward with their marketing mm. and actually make them, you know, more proactive in the marketplace. It's really mm. important for them, isn't it, though? I mean, you, you, you see that. We go in, as I've said already, lots and lots of factories every day of the week. And the things they're good at is making parts. Yeah. yeah. But they're not good at really <laughs> telling people that they're making good parts. Yeah. And some companies you go in and you go, I wouldn't have even known this company either existed. Um, I certainly wouldn't know what they're making. And then you might go and try and find their website and they haven't got one. And then you try and tag them in on a social media post and they're not on that either. And you kind of think, well, they've done this well so far like this, but... Is, it, is that sustainable these days without being, you know, social, without being able to communicate those message, messages? Because I, and I'm rambling a bit here, but I always think that people nowadays, they are making a lot of their decisions, whether it be people buying machine tools, people changing tooling providers, people subbing out work. They're making a lot of that decision prior to even picking up the phone and communicating, aren't they? So if you're not on I don't even know where my phone is, but if you're not on it, you're not going to win it, are you? Would you? Oh uh, yeah, of course. With I completely agree. It's what I do. It's what I'm trained in. But I think the biggest thing for me is the the basic level of social media is completely free. So I don't know why people wouldn't utilise that. And you can use it on a personal level. You can use it on a business level. And it just it's so quick it's so easy. And it, it, it at the end of the day, it's free marketing. You can obviously utilise the more expensive and paid parts of it but for someone for small companies even for big companies you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds to use a social media platform um you everyone has their phones like you said everyone has a phone in their pocket it doesn't have to be the latest technology it can be any sort of phone make a short video take a quick photo and just post it on your social media channels and the more you do that the more followers you get the more outreach you get and like you said most people do make those decisions before they've picked up the phone and that's the best thing about social media and the internet we don't have to always talk to someone of course the best thing is talking to people that human interaction is still necessary Mm. but having that first line of oh let's see who's out there or Mm. what's out there it's just so quick it's quick it's easy it's simple and this brings me on to a point now which um in relation to that your software your control systems it's it's much broader than what we talk about. It's maintenance. It's t- communicating with your, your department here in service. Life's got easier to communicate, hasn't it? And I mean, Ke- Kevin, you you obviously talking to engineers about these machines and solutions. And if they do have issues and need support and, and you know, it can all be diagnosed remotely and it can all be potentially solved remotely, can it? Yes, it can. I mean, for quite remember how many years but at least five years now every dmg mori machine has been fitted with uh, my dmg mori so uh, basically connectivity to the machine and that uh, connection to the machine can be used by service could be used by applications Um, we cannot initiate a connection to your machine we cannot get access to your machine without you requesting it and enabling it um, but it's there a standard on DMG Mori machines because we feel that you need that connectivity. That's mm. the way the world's going to work. Um, the, the control on the machine is now Salos control and on the NMV, we might add. And it's all that 
that uh, touch, pinch, move, which we're all familiar with on the iPhone. All of that technology here on the machine. Mm. Yeah. So yes. we had a case in point last week in um, Aberdeen with a customer. Um, linked up with his machine, networked the machine, um, looked at it and went, ah, slight programming error here. Not, not what the customer's fault, but we actually just showed him a better way of doing it. And that was our experts in the office, in here in Coventry. I mean, that saved a, a two-day trip. Mm. And it was, it was over and done with very, very quickly. And of course, that kind of support is, is absolutely critical. That's a free of charge support, that mm. is. So even you can stand by the machine, press the button that said, I need help, and it comes through to our service or our applications department, whichever one you want. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not just the, 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 the cost that, that you save, the customer saves. It's that time, isn't it? It's that precious time. It that is. You, you cannot afford to be down for 24, 40, 36, 48 hours. It's, it's critical. And it's, yeah. it's so good to be able to talk about these machines running unmanned. But if there are issues, they can be rectified and solved um, quickly. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, today's podcast. I think it's, it's been... Um, it's been educational for me from all elements and I've actually as I speak I often think of more things that, that I've, I've learned throughout it um, Kevin we have talked about the, the technology on the machine and why if someone is looking at a, an unmanned running solution the DMG Mori or the NMV machine fits perfectly what would be your fir- your final few words that you would say to to the UK market when you're you're traveling around why they should consider um, automation unmanned running lights out running um, and more importantly, the NMV model. Yeah, for me, you should consider a company that has the range of products that could suit your requirements, has the engineers in the way of the business managers that can sit and listen to your requirements, has the technology to support you digitally and physically. Um, and yeah, they're just some of the points I can think of off the top of my head. And, and yourself, Steve? Well, as I go back to the automation, it's critical that UK manufacturing remains or becomes competitive. And um, that, that is an important thing with the NMV. It gives you that competitive edge to really face not just your competitor from one county to another, but from the other side of the world to another. And um, this is really what this machine is all about. And if, and if people want to get to Japan with you next time, how do they... Go about that one. Just give me a PO for this. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you've got... <laughs> there's, got there's another so point that's called, just... It's called bribery and corruption. No, <laughs> we, we select the customers very carefully on, you know, is it the right visit for them? Um, obviously, we, we do it much more of a thank you to, to, to what people have done. Um, and they, they're all good customers, but they're all different range of customers as well. And um, I think it's important to get a different range of people together mm. because if you get people that are all the same you don't get a very good conversation. And there's a criteria. You need to be able to go with a few hours sleep. Um, yeah. Well, you can work. have four hours sleep a night. That, that's, that's enough, yeah. Right. You know, that's that rules a lot out. <laughs> Kevin, you want to make a yeah, th- There's one other thing that's come to my mind because of a project I'm particularly working on at the moment whose name must remain anonymous, but very few people realise that we also offer the facility of uh, DMG Mori Digital. What's that all about? delivering post processes for your machine as well. So not only, you know, it's the full picture here now. We're our own automation that's integrated to the machine, uh, work holding tooling we can support you with, but also the delivery of a post processor that will work first time and be safe. And we and we just supplied, well not just, but we recently supplied one to a, a Formula One team who's a, a technical partner with us. I, I won't mention the name, but I guess you know who that is. And they are in a very um, harsh environment from a point of view of a variety of components. Uh, they said, well, you've done the work, Kevin, have you? Yeah. Best source of post-processor they've ever had. You know, it was, which is Good to not an easy thing not to really, do. No, it's very difficult. Not an easy thing to do, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. It's the, the, the whole package. Charlie, we'll end with you. What's this company like to work for and these guys like to work with? Oh, gosh. Oh, it's never a dull <laughs> moment. Should we end on a high? <laughs> it's never a dull <laughs> moment. But, yeah, no, I think as we've been speaking about different things and how this year's gone, 
looking forward to next year there's so many different events coming up we've got front at the beginning i think anyone that's looking at possibly buying one of our machines wanting to get to know us as a business should definitely speak to our sales guys and they'll put you on to me and we can sort about coming over to Frontum with us in February and I think you'll get a feel for us as a company especially as DMG Mori UK and then the wider company as well cool. yeah good stuff can I just mention as well Japan Japan is a very special trip because of the location basically and the effort that it takes for people to get there because it's it's a long journey but we also take regular trips to um, factories throughout Europe so Charlie just mentioned Fronten which is normally at the beginning of the year we'd like to go to Sayback we're going to go to Famot which you've been to in Poland which is a very um, we've invested very heavily there with our own products for for being vertically integrated and is very much controlled digitally Um, we are arranging a trip uh, next week to our showroom in Stuttgart in Germany which has got uh, 12 or 14 uh, products in there that we want to show customers so we're arranging that so we're always arranging trips to to show machines to customers and, and, and let them see the value of really what it's all about and I think that really is um, you know that really is the way I think in our industry people buy into not just the product but the company don't they and that it, it's it's a whole package yeah. Um, yeah. guys it's been a, a, a real pleasure hosting this podcast today and um, if you've been listening or watching of course please please feel free to uh, make a comment and we'll get back to you if you're interested in any of the dmg mori products that you'll find across our channel then of course you can uh, contact them via us or, or contact them directly but i suppose more importantly if you're interested in knowing more about the nmv range the nmv 3000 that's behind us this five axis machine with 34 pallets it's available from stock as we sit here and speak there is two machines um talk to the guys at dmg mori and thank you for listening uh, to this podcast thank you very much guys. thank you thank you thank you